Good morning. It is wonderful to be here worshiping with you this morning. Glad to see so many uh, wonderful smiling faces. Happy Independence Day. For those of watching on Facebook Live, we will partake in communion immediately following the sermon. So be sure to have your coffee, juice, or beverage and your bread or roll ready for the blessing. Uh, various members are hosting Meet the Pastor events at their homes. This is an opportunity for you to get to know Pastor Todd and for him to get to know all of us. It's easy for us to remember one name. It's difficult for him to remember 100 names. So there's a sign-up sheet in the gathering on the table uh, with numerous dates available. Please add your name and whatever date works best for you. Also remember, or also notice the number of people per home that is no notated on each date so we can meet as a group. Um, for those people watching online, if you would like to sign up, you can email the office at any time and uh, we'll add you to that list. Our Crawford County Fair is Tuesday, July 13th. We're gonna line up at 3.15 p.m. Our uh, float will highlight our quilters sewing stitches of love. We encourage everyone who is available to join us for the parade as we spread the word of our upcoming sesquicentennial. For those that ordered t-shirts, they'll be available next Sunday at $11 each. There will be some extras if you didn't get your name on the list, so uh, come and join us. Uh, there'll be a media team meeting Wednesday at five. Uh, Bob Brown's memorial service is Wednesday at 6. Um, let Cheryl know if you're interested on being part of the helpers for greeters and ushers. We'll put you on that rotation. Um, the Grounded in Prayer small group is going to meet again this Thursday at 6 p.m. Um, again, online, if you're interested in joining that, uh, just email Cheryl at the office and she will put you into contact and make sure we get you part of that as well. So as we bring the word, the light of God into our worship service, let us be in an attitude of prayer. Thank you, ladies. Now, if you will uh, rise with me, please, as we begin our worship in song. Hymn number 696.
Holy God, Lord of, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You have called us to be your servants, chosen us to be here this day, and blessed us with your grace and mercy. Father, as we celebrate our Independence Day, we are eternally grateful for the freedom to gather everywhere in your name without worry of persecution. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those gathered in the world over in your name. Bless them with peace and security so all may find the independence from the world of sin and see the beauty and the glory of your kingdom. Bless our songs and hymns of worship so those wandering in the dark may see your loving face and be drawn closer to your loving embrace. With all the power of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> as we enjoy the return of our choir after a year and a few months vacation. It's great to have them back. Oceans to the mountains, majesty. 
lost my menu there for a minute. Amen. It is wonderful to be back in choir and to have them back. And uh, I hope you guys appreciate how much it was nice having them on the opening hymns singing behind us as well. At this time, uh, we share our joys and concerns. Um, I would like to start off by sharing a joy and a concern. Um, Alex got her full driver's license this week. So uh, <laughs> prayer for her as she is learning some independence and prayers for me as I'm uh, dealing with it. Are there other joys we'd like to share? It's Becky? Nice to, so nice to see so many faces out today. Agreed. Becky? Um, Carolyn Grayson had her cornea transplant on Monday, and things went better than we could have hoped. And she's, she's doing very well. So Carolyn Brinkman had uh, cornea, uh, yeah, cornea transplant surgery this past week, and things went much better than expected. Um, so joys for that and prayers for continued healing. I know it's a pretty long road for her. <laughs> John? I lost a good friend last night uh, in his sleep. Uh, good thing he survived. John lost one of his friends last night, so we pray for him and that family. And thanks for the choir again. Can I help you here? Second, thanks for the choir, absolutely. Uh, concerns, any that we need to be lifted out loud anymore? All right. Um, I think Peggy has a joy she would like to share with us. Okay, that's you have to come over to the mic. Well, it is my great joy as co-chair of the PPR committee to welcome Pastor Todd Holman, who is our new pastor beginning today. Actually, some of us have met him earlier in the week because he moved in on Monday, I believe. Uh, it is my great joy because he has come, he has been appointed, but come willingly to our church to lead us with love and service as we go into the next year, which is our 150th birthday celebration. And we hope many years to come. So welcome, Pastor Todd. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to pray now uh, after our joys and concerns. So let's, uh, let's be in prayer. Well, God, we just give you thanks. What a beautiful day. What a wonderful day to celebrate our independence as a country and, and the, uh, so, so many years uh, and of freedom that we've had uh, due to uh, the sacrifices of so many so long ago. And we're just so grateful that we could come and worship here today in freedom. And, and we thank you for that. We lift up these joys and these concerns and ask your, your help and your touch be with each one that are, uh, especially those that have lost loved ones. And uh, we also uh, ask your healing touch upon uh, Carolyn as she has received her uh, new uh, cornea transplant this week. We're thankful for that. And all these things we lift up to you. And, and, and Lord, we just pray your uh, blessing of your Holy Spirit during the rest of this time. We're so grateful for uh, being able to be back and, and, and have the choir again. And uh, so many lessons that we have, have, we have learned. We've certainly learned not to be, uh, take anything for granted after this last year. And so it's, it, we're just, we just come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. And, and we offer this praise to you. And we pray now, as Jesus taught his disciples uh, then and now, to pray. Our Father, who is art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right. I think that means uh, it is, yes, time for me to, uh, I'm just getting used to this now, getting used to, I uh, appreciate that, Travis, that you notice that, uh, yeah, I have a lot of people to, uh, to remember, and um, I used to do that better 
when I was younger, but, uh, you know, the older I get. All right. Well, let's hear the word of the Lord from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and exalted throne, the edges of his robe filling the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around him. Each had six wings, and two they veiled their faces, and two their feet, and with two they flew about. They shouted to each other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heavenly forces. All the earth is filled with God's glory. The door frame shook at the sound of their shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. I said, Woe is me, I am ruined, I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of the heavenly forces. Then one of the winged creatures flew to me, holding a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. And he touched my mouth, and he said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed, and your sin is removed. Then I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom should I send, and who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. This is the word of the Lord for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God for his word to us today. All right, we'll see how this works. I'm going to uh, use this this week anyway. Um, but uh, it is great to be here. And finally, I think I've said that a couple of times, it seems like, you know, we've known since February, right? <laughs> or, or after uh, March, I guess. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I had to take care of uh, business there and close out nine years at uh, two churches. And uh, I have, uh, that's the longest I've spent uh, at a place, uh, so far anyway. And uh, anyway, it's great to be here and finally see everybody in person. I've been watching you online, and uh, I mostly saw the backs of your heads, so it's good to see voices, uh, faces, uh, and hear voices uh, today. Uh, and also, it's, it's good to uh, see uh, that thing on the wall that points to the fact that uh, there's other people there watching this morning, and welcome to you, and glad to have uh, people watching. My mother is here today. She uh, surprised, uh, surprise atta- I mean, surprised me this morning. Her and my uh, sister Faith are sitting back there. And, um, but yes, I moved in on Monday, and I'm still unpacking, still got some, a lot of uh, things to, to get settled and whatnot. I uh, spent some time in the office this week, and, and, uh, and, and I certainly appreciate uh, Cheryl and everyone that has uh, come by and, and uh, helped in any way uh, get started uh, this week. I, I do want to thank, before I go any further, uh, uh, Reverends uh, Greg Weeks and Kurt Sherman, of course. Uh, wow, those guys, you already know, and, but... Uh, uh, you know, they've been your pastors for the last six months and getting everything ready, and, and they've been a godsend, haven't they? They've been godsend to me as well, and I'm just so grateful uh, for their leadership. Uh, as you uh, may know, this is somewhat of a homecoming for me. I grew up uh, not too far from here in Pulaski County in Dixon. Was a little t- Don't hold that against me. But uh, my parents uh, raised me and my three sisters in Dixon, and uh, I have here, it says, my mother is still living in the Jefferson City area these days. So anyway, uh, our father passed, my father passed away in 2002, and we lost my sister Mary Kay to uh, ALS a couple of years ago. So it's been a a tough couple of years for uh, our family, but but we're we're moving along and we're doing okay. Uh, I have three children, one adult and two are still in school, and I think we have a... a, uh, uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so you're going to see here, let's see, uh, Ezra and Eliza, where are they? Don't know where they went. Okay, well, anyway, there was a picture at some point of Ezra and Eliza, and that picture, uh, that's the two, uh, the 13, well, she'll be 13 this coming Friday. Ezra is 17, and uh, they were, he- the picture w- would have showed you a picture that they were, um, when they, uh, uh, it was on the same day that it was a Saturday before Easter, it was the same day that they came here and saw the parsonage for the first time, and then we had the, the great infamous uh, tr- uh, keys in the tree incident that some of you may have heard about, I don't know. But uh, anyway, the other people here, that's Caleb, my oldest son, and his family, 
and there's the grandkids, and then there's one grandkid who is uh, still there with, with Haley, uh, and she has since been born, and her, and, uh, her name is, uh, we can see her down there. There she is. That's Joel, with, uh, and then that's, that's Titus, by the way, with a mop on his head. And uh, anyway, uh, lo- lo- love those guys. And then there's, uh, there's our dog, Bucky. Uh, he'll be making an appearance at some point. In, in the next month or so. Ezra and Eliza will be moving to the Rolla area uh, to live with their mom, and uh, they'll be going to school there, but they'll be here uh, at least every other week or so, and so uh, looking forward to that. Uh, all right, we'll just let that do whatever it wants to do. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, I've been a United Methodist pastor since 1998, and prior to that, I was in the radio business for nearly 30 years, And uh, 10 of those years, I was both a pastor on the radio and, uh, pastor and on the radio, but not doing pastoral work on the radio. Well, anyway, as we get into this message, I'm going to share a little bit more of my uh, faith journey uh, as we we go along. Yes. There they are. There's Ezra and Eliza. All right. Yes, that's what they look like when they were here that day. And as I bring them up, I bring them up uh, uh, in prayer today because last night uh, they were uh, in a fender bender. Uh, together, kind of destroyed Ezra's truck, but they're okay. And uh, I got I got that word last night about uh, 10:45. So, but they're doing okay. Um, so those two will be here. Uh, well, I don't know if they'll they'll probably be here next week. Um, Ezra won't be driving up though, like uh, he had planned. So back to our scripture. Uh, it begins in the year that King Uzziah died. And uh, that begins our reading. Isaiah went to the temple just like he had had gone every other Sabbath. And uh, who knows what was going on with him that day? Who knows what his week was like? Who knows what he was even thinking or or if he was even thinking about godly things when he entered the temple? And uh, maybe he was really stressed out uh, over the death of King Isaiah. Don't know. But then he saw something. Something happened in that temple. He had a vision that changed everything for him, okay? Just changed everything. And, and with that, Isaiah saw himself um, for who he was. He saw himself as a man. He saw himself as a human being. He saw himself as a person struggling with uh, life issues. Uh, he saw himself as a sinner, uh, a person with a few demons here and there, a person who had done a lot of questionable things, in his life. Now, just to see if you're paying attention, did I just describe Isaiah's spiritual condition before he met God face to face? Or did I just describe the condition of my own soul before Jesus came into my life and found me? Well, you probably figured the answer out both. There's a lot of similarities in my own faith journey, in my own st- uh, story uh, with God. And, uh, and, and, and my calling and sending story is, is quite similar in a few ways, anyway, to, uh, to Isaiah. But see, Isaiah saw this incredible light, and he saw these winged creatures, and, 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 he, and he saw the Lord high and exalted on a throne. And there were these creatures called seraphim, and they had six wings, and they were flying, and they were calling to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, how would you feel if you saw this yourself? Would you be, I don't know, a little freaked out? <laughs> Suddenly realize just how mortal you are in comparison to, uh, uh, or, or would you maybe be scared out of your mind? I don't know. I, I probably would be scared out of my mind. I'm not sure. But I know that that's how Isaiah felt because that's what it says in the uh, scripture account, he thought he was a goner. He thought he was done for. Uh, but that's, you know what, that's, that's not how God operates. I mean, God certainly is holy. There is no question about that. But God is also loving and merciful as, as seen in the person of Jesus. And God seeks us out in our distress, in our times of trouble, in our in our doom and our gloom, and, and often when we're feeling worthless and sinful, and God offers us a part of, of himself. The Holy Spirit knocks on the door of our heart, and when we open that door, the Holy Spirit enters and comes in and makes his home in our heart, and all things become new, all things. 
And when all things became new for me about 27 years ago or so, everything changed for me. Uh, I, the, the word that they use for that when I went to seminary is called transformation, I think. And it's not unlike what we, the transformation of a, of, of a little, uh, uh, um, you know, a moth into a, yeah, a caterpillar. A caterpillar into a butterfly, right? All things become new. And when this happened for me, things started happening really, really fast. And uh, uh, in that, uh, I had been invited to uh, several different churches um, in, in uh, Springfield at that time. I, I didn't go to any of them. And it wasn't until uh, a United Methodist pastor actually called me on the phone, met me for lunch, and recruited me back into church. <laughs> I actually got recruited. Uh, I remember somebody saying, nobody's going to call and just bring you back into church. You have to go and search and, you know, like everybody else. Nope, that's not what happened. I was recruited for a new church start in Springfield. It was called Sunrise. And, uh, and so anyway, once I got in, back into that church, uh, things were really happening pretty fast. And I want to tell you a little story here. And this is a true story. And I'm going to warn you, it has to do with um, uh, some men talking in a restroom, Okay. And uh, so uh, it's okay. It's, it's, it's not a bad story. Uh, matter of fact, it, it tells of some amazing things. But it also tells you just how crazy some of us pastor types can be uh, sometimes. But anyway, I was at this, uh, this uh, uh, three-day weekend renewal called Camino. And it's not unlike uh, Walk to Emmaus, which maybe some of you have, have been on. Uh, but anyway, I'm on this bathroom break, and I just get in the stall of this, this really big, sprawling church, and I hear a voice saying, Holman, is that you? It's my pastor's voice. And I said, yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> and he said, your tennis shoes. I recognized your tennis shoes. Oh, great. Well, anyway, I said, uh, all right, that, that's wonderful. Uh, so anyway, he, he proceeded to ask me some questions, and, and then he dropped this one. He said, do you think God might be calling you into the ministry? Sorry, I mean, I know this is not a great time to ask that, but I just, I've been meaning to ask you that. And so, uh, you know, uh, not only did I have no idea what he was talking about, uh, I also... Um, uh, never mind the fact that we were in this large church men's room, you know. But a year and a half later, and that's the important part, after praying and seeking, uh, seeking God on this matter, I discovered that indeed, I believe God was calling me into the ministry. What part of ministry, I didn't know until I got a call later to uh, be the pastor of, of two churches in Laclede County. And uh, that's, that's, what, that's how I got started uh, in, in, uh, in the ministry. But in our scripture passage, Isaiah c uh, confronted with the holy God, and, and it's something like, it, it's just like someone holding a mirror up to his soul, it seems to me. Uh, a light has come on, he sees for himself who he is. Woe to me, he cries. I am ruined. For a man, I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And one of the angelic creatures then takes a burning coal, symbolizing purifying fire from the Holy Spirit. And from the altar of God, symbolizing the purification that comes from blood sacrifices. In other words, this image represents the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that's what it points to. And the creature takes the red-hot coal and he touches it to Isaiah's lips, to the very part of Isaiah that he identifies most with his own sin. And then the creatures say, see, this, is, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sins have been atoned for. So when God comes, he comes to us while we were still sinners. In a minute when we are... Uh, in the middle of the communion liturgy, we'll hear the words, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. Right? He comes to us as we are in our unworthiness, in our mess, and the light of truth is turned on in our darkness and we're able to see the things that were hidden before and we recognize our, savior, our, our sinfulness and our need for a Savior. 
And when we recognize that, everything changes. We don't deserve it. We might not even be asking for it or looking for it. But God comes to us and offers us the greatest gift imaginable. And I feel like that's, that's how it happened for me, and, and it happens for, for many of us, all of us. And that's how much God loves you and loves me and loves us all. Suddenly, Isaiah's sin is taken away. He feels like a brand new person, and the Holy Spirit, through the new eyes of faith, has been given and shows him how much need there is in the world, just how broken the world is, how many people there are who are just like him or just like he was before God appeared to him and took away his sin. And Isaiah wants to pass it on. He wants others to experience what he's experienced. That's exactly how I remember feeling all those years ago. When I realized that Christ had set me free for once and for all, for all those things that had a hold on me, I wanted everybody to know what that was like. I wanted everybody to know that same freedom. That, that freedom that only comes through Jesus making his home in you and setting you free from the things and, 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 and the chains that hold you back. And Isaiah, out of a redeemed heart that is amazed by, amazed by grace that he has received, he says, what? Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. He doesn't ask a bunch of questions. He doesn't need details. He's just in. He's all in, no matter what. And he's saying, Lord, use me for your glory however you see fit. Send me. I'll go. If there's one thing Isaiah chapter 6 and the rest of scriptures make clear, it's that God does indeed, as I said before, meets us where we are. Zacchaeus was up a tree. Peter was out fishing, right? Paul was on his way to Damascus. I was still focused on myself and my career in radio. The scripture reminds us that we've all sinned, all of us. Not a one has gotten out of that. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's why Jesus was necessary. We live in these terribly sinful times, don't we? And, and yet, like Isaiah, there's this realization that opens us up to the possibility of forgiveness. In our scripture this morning, King Uzziah is dead, but Jesus is very much alive. And God is on his throne, and he is in control no matter what disease comes our way, no matter what war may break out, no, no matter what may happen in our world, God is in charge of us. And if that's true, then you know what? There's no need to be afraid. There's no need to panic. If that's true for Isaiah, it's true for us as well. God is good. We can trust him. Even if we can't trust anyone else, and a lot of trust seems to be missing among people in the world today, but we can trust God. We can find rest in him. We can find peace for our busy, worried souls. And we just need to allow God to do that. We just need to say, Lord, I turn over my choice, my freedom to choose you. I turn that over to you and say, come in and do this work in me. I want peace. I want rest. And then after that, we sign up, as we've done before. We sign up, and we be, we're sent into the world, called and sent. Not everyone, not even close to everyone, is called into vocational ministry, like I was. Uh, most of us are called into a deeper uh, relationship with Jesus and a further call into what we in the Methodists call lay ministry, right? But God is still saying, uh, he's, he's still saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And who will take this message of grace and forgiveness to a hurting world? Will you and I embrace that call? For it's out of redeemed hearts, amazed by God's grace, that these words of Isaiah come. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Praise God. Amen. We're going to... 
celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, and uh, you'll see that uh, on the screen, or is there a song? Oh, okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Uh, there is, um, you'll see that on the screen. And so I begin, we begin with the, first off, everybody has one of these, right? Okay, good. And uh, when I get to a particular spot in here, I will stop and say, all right, now it's time to take off the, the uh, first part and then the second, and uh, we'll do that. Um, I'll make, try to make that obvious for you. But uh, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So therefore, let us confess our sin uh, before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. You have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And here's that part I was talking about. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right uh, to let us give thanks to our, the Lord. It is right to give us. Our, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed in us your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. And you spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. You, your Spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, and you delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he broke it, and he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Uh, uh, do this in remembrance of me. And when, when supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery. Christ has died Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now if you will take out and just uh, carefully peel that first part off. 
Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ. And now we you carefully do this so we don't spill it. All right. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And so this is the body of Christ which has been given for you. And the blood of Christ which has been given for you. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh God, we give you thanks for these gifts. We are thankful people, and we come to you to give as you have asked us to do, and you have blessed us in so many ways, and we give so that others may know you, come to know you, so that your kingdom on earth may be like the kingdom in, uh, in heaven and expanded ever more, including more and more each day of hurting people that need your touch of grace. We use these gifts and use us. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we go forth in faith with our last hymn, I would like to acknowledge uh, birthdays and anniversaries. I did overlook those earlier. On the 5th, we have Rachel Bular, Melissa Hammonds. On the 9th, we have uh, Eliza, Pastor Todd's daughter, and Guadalupe Rodriguez. And then on the 10th, we have Doris Roganish. Anniversaries, uh, Joseph and Annie are celebrating um, their anniversary today. And on the 8th, Max and Gladys Butler will share an anniversary. So we celebrate with them. So now let us end our worship in hymn number 724 on Jordan's Stormy Banks. On Jordan's Stormy Banks I stand We got through that one. <laughs> I think we're going to be okay. Uh, it is so good to be here in your sesquicentennial. I knew I was going to be able to, I thought I'd be able to say it. I know I can't spell it, but the 150 year celebration, it, it's just, it's, it's going to be great. And I'm, I'm so excited for that. And now may uh, the spirit of God rest upon you as you hear God's call. May you say, here I am, send me go in peace in the name of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit. Amen. Before we start our uh, postlude, I do want to invite everybody. We have refreshments out in the foyer uh, for a meet and greet and celebration of Pastor Todd's first Sunday. Thank you. 